All right, guys, today we're talking about descriptive writing, and I want to take a close look at what makes awesome writers so good at what they do. And it really comes down to talented writers will show the reader the scene or the person instead of just telling it with flat description. So we're going to practice this a little bit today and kind of an experiment. We're going to do a little bit of writing practice, which I'm hoping you'll be brave to share with the community. So oftentimes in English class, you'll hear a teacher talking about show, not tell. We want to be shown a scene instead of just told what happens. And so I have an example here that's really concrete for you. So up first for this example, this is a telling sentence. The man is old. And automatically an old guy is, you know, pops into your brain. But he's kind of nondescript. He probably even looks like a bit of clip art to you. You don't know much about him. So that's just a telling sentence, all right? Old man, got it. But a showing sentence, I look to one of my masters, Stephen King, he gives us this sentence wherein he never uses the word old, he never even uses the word man. Let's take a look at how he shows us that the man is old. This is from his novel, Thinner. The codger reaches out and caresses Halleck's cheek with one twisted finger. His lips spread open like a wound, showing a few tombstone stumps poking out of his gums. They are black and green. His tongue squirms between them and then slides out to lick his grinning, cracked lips. Ooh, that dude is way more vivid and visual in your mind. Repulsive, but that's exactly what King wants you to see. And so he paints that picture with words. Versus another showing example I have here from Mark Helprins, a soldier of the Great War. Another old man, but a different old man. And again, never uses the words old or man. Limping along paths of crushed stone and tapping his cane as he takes each step, he races across intricacies of sunlight and shadow spread before him on the dark garden floor like golden lace. Alessandro Gianni is tall and unbent, and his buoyant white hair falls, floating around his head like the white water in the curl of a wave. Can you not picture Alessandro there? What a beautiful example of paragraph that shows us this man instead of just telling us that he's got a white beard, right? Like we've got like, oh, we just can see him there. All right, now this is where the experiment comes in because this week we're gonna do something a little different. I want you to take a crack at writing more showing paragraphs based on the four telling sentences that I've given you here. In a perfect world, you would be super brave and you would leave those four short paragraphs in the comment section so other folks could see what you do with those prompts. If you're not comfortable with that, I totally get it. Putting your writing out there into the world is scary. And so if you just want to do it for yourself and keep it for yourself, that is okay too. But definitely hit pause, jot down these four telling sentences sentences. I'll have them written out so you can copy and paste them in the video description bar below also, but I'm looking forward to seeing your showing, your showing paragraphs based on my telling sentences. All right, I really want to see your exhaustion. And by the way, I don't want you to use the word exhausted or exhaustion in that paragraph. I want to see that the puppy was a terror. And you can't use terror and you can't use puppy. In number three, I want to see your friend so mad. And I don't want you to use the word friend or mad anywhere in that paragraph. And number four, the substitute teacher, I want to see his or her strangeness without being told that it's a substitute teacher and that you cannot use the word strange. Are you up for the challenge? It's a little different. I'm giving you homework. I don't usually do that, but I am looking forward to seeing what you come up with. I won't, with my current workload, be able to respond to each, uh, each entry. I'm hoping I get lots and lots, and I probably won't have time to like go through them all and give written feedback in the comment section, but I will definitely read them all. So school appropriate, you know, I got kids around here, uh, but go ahead and sharpen those pencils, warm up those keyboards, and let's see what you got. All right, I look forward to seeing what you come up with. I'll be back on Monday with grammar practice, and then on next Friday, we're gonna talk about your work. So come on, give me something to chew on. All right, you guys, have a super weekend. Do a little bit of writing for me. That'd be awesome. And I'll see you on Monday. Bye.